Hey, it's the Nerdy Sports Fan! So, we're continuing our series grading the 2017 draft. We're into the AFC South. Let's get into these Indianapolis Colts. Now, I get it. Colts fans don't really like me right now because I think they're only going to win three games. I stand by that, okay? I do not have any faith whatsoever in Philip Rivers' arm being anything other than a wet noodle this year. Um, but hey, I've been wrong in the past, so you know, you'll be able to post all over my comments and talk about how I don't know a damn thing at the end of the year if you're right. I'm banking on me being right, though. Anyways, um, 2017 draft, let's dig into it. So, in the first round, they start things off pick number 15 and get Malik Hooker. Now, Malik is an underrated safety in my mind. He is definitely, definitely high-quality playmaker. And any team would love to have that guy as a backstop. So, kudos. Definitely a solid pick. I don't care what anybody says about drafting safeties in the first round or positional value. Bullshit, okay? If in your first round you do not find a quality plug-and-play starter, you're not doing it right. I don't give a shit about positional value. I don't, okay? And they found a guy that they could just plunk right in, put him on the field, and he's going to start. And you're not going to worry about that position for a very long time. That's the whole point of your first-round draft pick, okay? So good job. Uh, later on, uh, second round, Quincy Wilson, corner out of Florida, is a meh kind of player. Um, he, he's still on the team, which is saying something, because the NFL does, after all, stand for not for long. And here we are three years later, Wilson's hanging on. Now, moving on, third round, pick number 80, Terrell Basham. Uh, the Ohio State product is a whatever kind of player. He's not really doing anything, and that's why he's playing for the Jets. Now... Zach Banner, the offensive tackle out of USC, coming in as the first of three fourth-round draft picks. Um, yeah, I don't know how he's still in the league. I mean, he, he's not really doing a damn thing, but yeah, he's still in the league and on the team. So good for him, right? Um, now, here's where this draft really gains its value for me. Their second fourth-round draft pick, Pick number 143, picking up Marlon Mack. This guy is the reason, or one of a few reasons, why everybody says running back definitely does not need to be drafted in the first round. Okay? You're talking about value based off of where you're picking them. There are so many examples of running back late in the draft, fourth round here, that are Pro Bowl caliber players. You, you do not need to draft a round one or even round two running back. There's a handful. And yes, the Chiefs drafted a running back in the first round this year, and no, I don't agree with it. Um, especially not the one they got. Anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, their third, fourth round draft pick, uh, Grover Stewart, defensive tackle out of uh, Albany. He's rotational depth. He's still on the team. Nate Harrison, their first fifth round draft pick at pick number 158, corner out of Temple. Again, nothing special. Still on the team. Contributor on special teams. Probably why he's hanging on the roster. Um, but yeah, uh, most of this draft really is that depth rotational range. So um, the last pick in this draft was fifth round pick number 161, Anthony Walker. Middle linebacker out of Northwestern is a meh kind of player again. So I do love this way of trading to build towards the upper end of the draft. So I greatly appreciate that style from the GM. Um, if you are going to trade things away, trade away sixth and seventh round draft picks to, to shore up numbers. Um, get all of the higher draft picks you possibly can, because the bulk of the talent in the NFL comes from those higher rounds. So stack picks. I, I don't care how many picks at the end of the draft you give away. 
as long as you stack picks in the fourth round and earlier. And in this draft, they had three fourth round draft picks. And because of that, they were able to, with one of them, find Marlon Mack. Now, this draft is good, not great. I give it a solid B. They got Malik Hooker, who is a plug-and-play starter. Uh, you didn't screw up your first-round draft pick, which way too many teams do because they overthink it. And most of the players from this draft, actually all of the players from this draft, are still in the league. Okay, that, that says something. They're, they're finding NFL-quality talent. Not necessarily starting-quality talent, but depth matters in the league. Everybody gets hurt, okay? So if you, with a fifth-round draft pick, found a guy who's going to hang on your roster, know your system, and plug in when the guy in front of him gets hurt, that's valuable. So whereas their best player from this draft is either Malik Hooker or uh, Marlon Mack, whichever you grade as a higher-value position, because for me, talent level, they're around the same, um, Nobody else is really an impact player. So I can't give them an A, but they do definitely get a B because not a single person that they drafted is out of the league. Solid work, Colts. All right, now, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and hit up my other channel as well as my Twitch, the Nerd E Sports Fan, for video game content. I'll be broadcasting Warzone amongst other games that I play. Thanks for watching.